Hi, it's Lucy again, back with the second segment of From the Kitchen for the next step. Um, I've got my sample completed to the step of um, the edges are machine stitched and I'm ready to do a little aging. If you remember, we started off with a piece of cardstock, then a layer of cotton batting, then a piece of a tea towel. Um, then I went uh, glue basted that together, then layered um, a lot of different decorative stitches on my sewing machine, and then I finished off with a tight zigzag around the edges to seal everything off. I like to do a little bit of, to make this look a little bit more vintage, a little bit aged, so I'm going to use um, the coffee grounds from this morning and uh, just have them here and I'm just going to sprinkle these on here and kind of rub it in a little bit on the edges and uh, just let this sit a moment. Then go brush it off and you're going to be really, it really gives a great aged look and uh, an interesting effect. I like the randomness of it and uh, it ages things very quickly. So I'm going to let this set up for probably about five minutes and then I'll brush it all off and we'll come back and do some fruit painting. Okay, you can see now that the coffee has really stained my piece and given it a good vintage look. Um, Leave it on for less time if you don't want as much color, or don't grind it in as much if you like something a little lighter. Uh, tea bags work also. I just don't want to soak the whole project because of the cardstock on the back side. Uh, next I'm going to show um, an idea for stamping with fruit. Um, it gives a really beautiful organic feel, but also a graphic look, and I think that will contrast nicely with all my vertical lines and, um, and also the vintage aging. The paint I'm using is just uh, folk art metallic blue topaz and I've got an apple that I've cut in half and I've left the apple sitting on some paper towels to absorb a little bit of the moisture. I'm just going to take my paintbrush and apply some paint to the apple. Not a lot, I just I want just kind of a soft look, not a doesn't have to be a heavy coat. I don't mind if the whole apple doesn't imprint. Just make sure that the edges aren't all messy because that will kind of glob out on you. Okay. Then just decide where you want it to go and impress it onto your, your piece. And there we go. On my other, um, my actual piece I'm doing for the class, I used pears, uh, but I was, my pears weren't any good now, so I had to had to uh, not use it this time. The um, the paint I used, um, you could use fabric paint um, if you were doing this for an actual art quilt where you were going to need to wash it or actually with the art quilt you wouldn't be washing it but um, if you were doing this you could use fabric paint and you could actually heat set it and it would be permanent. But this is just a little piece, a little decorative piece so I'm not going to worry about that. So I just used um, an inexpensive acrylic paint. One thing that I've seen I really liked, this is actually a tip from Melanie Testa, to finish off the edges of her art quilts, I've seen her use acrylic paint. And it just seals the edges, so what she did is just uh, wrap the edge and kind of glob the paint on, and I really love that finish. Not only does it add some texture and color, it really does seal it so you're not going to have any thread that's popping out. And uh, So just with the leftover paint, I'm going to seal the edges off. And we'll let that dry. And next I'll be back with a couple more ideas for embellishing. I wanted to make some dimensional leaves to go on my fruit. Um, as you can see here I've got my little panel finished, the fruit stamped on it, and I've gone around the edges with the acrylic paint. Um, this is almost dry so I'm just going to set this, this to the side and I'm going to show you an idea for making some dimensional leaves got a piece of paper here, just a green pattern. Um, this is uh, just a piece of paper from Graphic 45. Um, I'm using some of the Domestic Goddess paper on my main project, so I just kind of wanted to pull from that. And um, I've got a couple of products here from Shimmers. The Shimmer Spritz, this is called Olive Branch, and a Shimmers Paints called uh, Mossy Stone. And I'm going to use that to shape my paper when I cut the leaf out and to give it dimension and some shine. I'm just going to freehand cut a leaf and uh, so I've got my leaf shape and I just kind of want my leaf to be creased down the middle 
and um, gonna kind of shape it as that dries. So first I'm gonna spray both sides with some shimmer spritz and I'm just gonna roll the bottle and uh, get the colors all mixed up well and give it a couple squirts. Shimmers is completely non-toxic and I can wipe it right off the surface when I'm finished. So I'm gonna kind of fold it and get that crease really in there and think about how I wanna shape it. Um, also, no staining of the fingers, which is really nice. <laughs> uh, the Shimmers paints, I've, I've already kind of stirred this up and let, gotten it all mixed up well. Love this color. I'm just gonna kind of make it thick on the edge, a little globby. I like the way that looks. And a little bit on the back. Then I'm going to take it and use my heat gun for a moment so it's going to get noisy. I'm going to pinch it closed while I'm doing that. The shimmer dries really quickly. And um, <clears throat> so now I've got dimensional leaf. I'm just going to blend the paint on the edges a little bit and uh, now I can take this over and attach it to my project. And I'm going to have a really nice dimensional leaf to put onto my my apple here. So I'll stitch that down and I'm also going to take some brown thread and hand stitch a little stem. Okay and I'll see you in a minute. Okay, we're just about to finish up our project. I have um, glued on one of the leaves that I made and stitched a little stem here. And I decided on, um, I just used some crochet thread with a dar large darning needle to stitch a little um, chain there. And um, stamped some letters and used some chipboard letters. So um, just use a little more of the fabric tack glue to attach the letters. And um, for my ink, I used an archival ink. This is a Versafine and just some uh, foam letter stamps. So I've got my an apple a day and I stuck a piece of apple bag mesh underneath my one word. I'm going to take this to the sewing machine now and just st stitch through the letters. Um, you can stitch through chipboard letters as long as you stitch slowly and use a, a sharp needle. I have a denim needle in my machine right now. So we're going to pause for a second and go to the machine and I'm going to show you the stitching. Okay, um, I'm back again. I went to my machine and I stitched through um, so just some straight stitch rows through the chipboard letters using about a size 90 needle and that was um, like a denim needle and uh, just stitch slowly so that it gives your machine time to go through the various thicknesses. Um, just kind of, as long as you go slowly, you shouldn't break any needles. Uh, if you do, just make sure you, um, you know, stop immediately and obviously change it out. So, um, anyway, this is really it for this project, and um, I hope you'll take the chance to come by and check out our blog. It's called The Next Step, Step Challenge. I'll put the link here in this post, and we have monthly challenges with racks, and we offer tutorials every month. Um, showing different ideas for mixed media to be incorporated into scrapbooking or um, using your scrapbooking supplies for mixed media projects. Um, thanks so much and um, again this is Lucy Edson for The Next Step. Have a great day!